It's a reflection and a translation. I never, ever, ever taught Goliath reflections before. Now all of a sudden it's like, it's in the curriculum, you have to do stuff about Goliath reflections. It's like, well, if you do translations and you do reflections, why, what's the point of doing a Goliath reflection? It's just one and the other. At any rate, I make sure that I at least show you uh, what a glide reflection is, where you have to do something and then reflect over something and then translate. Or it could be in the other order. You could translate first and then reflect. But it's not anything new at all. It's stuff that you already know how to do. So just make sure that you follow the directions as well. It says reflect triangle ABC in the x-axis and then translate it 3, negative 1. So for the first one, I want you just to reflect over the x-axis. And then we're going to take those points and translate it. Three, negative one. If it's in quadrant three now, when I reflect it over the x-axis, where's it going to be? I got to reflect it over. I want to use a highlighter. X-axis. What quadrant is it going to land in? Mm -hmm. Two. So it looks like B is one space away there. It should be one space above here. That's where B prime is going to be. Do you remember what the rule is? Anybody? Let's see. X stays the same. Yeah. When we reflect over the x axis, and all these should change negative or from negative to positive. And I think those are the right points that I just plotted too, just by looking at it. Negative two to one. Negative 4, 6. Negative 6, 3. Looks good. Now we're taking this one and translating it 3, negative 1. So we're not going back to the original. I'm doing it. We're doing from the translated or from the reflected figure. And you can do this by graphing, by just saying, okay, this point goes 3 over and 1 down. Double prime. 3 over, 1, 2, 3, and 1 down, double prime, 3 over and 1 down. Or we could just take 3 and add it to all these x values, negative 1, take away 1 from all those values, and we should end up with the same coordinates. We could go down. So Matt, you're working on the points, right? What did you get for A double prime? Uh, negative 1, 5. That sounds good. I think I even have negative 1, 5 as my point. Yeah? What did you get for B? 1, 0. 1, 0. That's what I got for my B. What about for C? Negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. Perfect. Why do you think it's called a glide reflection? What? It does both. You got it. It slides and reflects. And it doesn't matter what order it's in, it could also reflect and then slide. Now, is this the first time you've ever seen a composition with this open circle? It's something that's going to carry through through trig. And if you go into college algebra, either one of those courses that you might go to next. This means like that you're doing things in a certain order. Technically, you'd write it with what you want to do first. You'd actually be putting last. And what you want to do second, you'd be putting first. So the way you do this is you always work backwards. So I could have asked you to do this composition, T, 3, negative 1, 
and reflect over the x-axis. If I asked it like this, you'd have to do this one first, and which we did, reflect over the x-axis, and then you would take whatever you got there and translate it 3, negative 1, and do that second. So this is just like kind of an introduction to looking at that open circle. It doesn't mean multiply, it's a composition. And it's the way we kind of put them together and make it so that we don't have to put all these written out with all the coordinates. We could ask you this type of a question and you should know that you work backwards and you go reflect first over the x-axis and then translate the reflection or the image. So if you want to put the word backwards there, you can. And it's just an intro to this. Because we're going to be doing more on compositions as well. Let's try the bottom one. And then at the bottom, I want to practice trying to write a composition with this example. So I think I tried to do it in the opposite order for the bottom one so that you could see it's just a combination of gliding and reflecting or reflecting and then gliding. So we have the rule up there, translate xy by x plus 2y minus 3, and then reflect its image in the y-axis. So we're not reflecting the original, we're reflecting the image. One is built on the other. So you can see how if you make one mistake, how technically, of course, all your other answers are going to be wrong. But that's why when you make one mistake, we have to actually on a Regents exam follow through your one mistake and make sure you didn't make any more. And you solved it correctly from then on, and then you only lose one point for making just that one mistake. You can see how it gets a little tricky trying to do that. Six. Are these the same points as before? They're different? Yeah. Okay. The A is different, but the other ones are the same? Okay. Seems kind of the same. So we're going to translate 2, negative 3 first. Corey, are you bad? Right? All right, so what would you get for your A prime? Negative 2, negative 3. So you're adding 2 here and taking away 3 here. Negative 2, negative 8. Love it. Okay. Jake, what would you get for B prime? Uh, 0... And two, take away three. Yep, this is the sign numbers coming back. So remember in algebra, some people really hated doing these pluses and negatives and all that kind of stuff. This is the return of them. Uh, Jordan, what'd you get for C prime? Negative four, negative six. Negative four, negative six. That looks good. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is I could always just move two spaces over. One, two, three, down. Two spaces over, one, two, three, down. Two spaces over, one, two, three, down. Sloppy. And let's see if those points match up. Negative two, negative eight is A prime. B is zero, negative four. Negative four, negative six. Looks perfect. Okay, if you want, you can highlight the y axis. That's still, 10% uh, of the classes always reflect over the wrong axis. If you highlight the axis, likely of you reflecting incorrectly is much smaller, okay? So you want to reflect over the y axis, so it should actually reflect over the y. Now be careful because if you highlight it, okay, B, when it flips over, it shouldn't move. So B should stay exactly where it is and be called B double prime. Okay? See the mistake you made? Yeah. the mm -hmm. Or the uh, original. Yep. It says reflect its image. So you want to reflect this one here. When we do compositions, they're always based on the one before it. So you kind of have to do the first part right to get the second part completely right. To get the third part completely right, they all fill on each other. So B prime should be in the same exact spot, 0, negative 4, A prime. What's the rule again for reflecting over the Y? Reflect over the Y, what do you keep all the same? The Ys. So this should be negative 8, 
this should be negative 6. And then what do you do with the 2 and the 4? Mm -hmm. So it's positive 2 and positive 4. A should be here, double prime. C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That looks good. Let's just double check the points are right. 4, negative 6, 2, negative 8. Looking good. Okay. So now, just again, just to get you used to writing it as a composition or seeing this circle again. Okay, there's going to be two things that we're going to put here because we did two things. You could also have a composition with three things or four things. But for this one, we only reflected and translated. So, what did we do first? Okay, so where should we put that? Here or here? Last. So this would be the translation to negative 3. What we did next should be over here, to the left of it. What would we do after that? Mm -hmm. So just to get in the habit of seeing this uh, composition, Students, if, when they get to college algebra and trig, um, it sometimes confuses them and they go in the forwards way. We want to make sure that we're always working backwards, so that's why I try to have you build it. We incorporate it a little bit so that you have a little better understanding when it's time to go to trig or college algebra. So, any questions? Easy stuff, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 